ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Mess Lords video. Today, Stretch and Charlie. <laughs> Charlie, the mugwump. Jaxie, here comes Jaxie. Jaxie, bring yourself over here and say hi. Hurry up. Bring the top hat and everything. Come on over, Stinky. The mugwumps are here. No, he's not going anywhere. There he is. We're going to cook a grilled tri tip and a flank steak real quick for you down and dirty. If you can find this kind of meat cut anywhere in the world, it's great. It was a cut that nobody wanted for a long time. I'm sure you can find the flank steaks, but this is Wagyu actually. This is like the Kobe beef of America that we hooked up with Snake River Farms and they gave us some great product. The difference with that Wagyu versus a normal flank steak or a normal chunk of red meat is there's more fat content. And fat is what? Yummy. Flavor. That's right, it's yummy. Jaxie, you like, you like the Wagyu, Jaxie? Of course I like Wagyu. Of course he likes Wagyu. So, what we're gonna do is gonna rub this bad boy down. I'll show you some of this meat. It's right down here. We got a Rosie down here too. Let me put a glove on. First things first, always be safe and keep it clean, right? Mm -hmm. I so, like glove. this is our flank steak. You don't need a glove. Uh -huh. Here's our flank steak, right? Mm -hmm. And here's our tri-tip. It's already been trimmed down. It looks real good. Heads up, Rosie. You can pat it dry a little bit. You don't want too much of the moisture on that. That came, there you go, pad dry. And we're gonna put a little bit of our olive oil on there. Our olive oil's over here. And what happened to my olive oil? What happened to my black bottle of olive oil, Charlie? Oh, I think that's that. No, that's the honey. Is my black bottle of olive oil over there. Huh? And it's only film, don't worry about it. We're only on live around the world. Do, 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 tick, tock, tick, tock. It's black olive oil. So you can get rid of some of this loose stuff. Here it is. Get rid of some of this loose fat that's on here. You definitely want to get rid of some of the silver skin. Silver skin is no good. It's not going to take on the flavor. You got to get underneath it. There's only a little, watch your fingers. A little bit left on there. It's chewy. You're never going to get through it. I need my other knife for that, but we'll see what we got here. How about this Mess Lords box right there? We can make those for you guys anywhere in the world, customized. Give one to your commander. That's too dark. Watch your fingers. Watch your eyes. There you go. So, get rid of the fat, any of that silver skin. Not much on these. Really nice chunk of meat right there. Okay, got our silver skin off. Put that down here. Not a lot of fat. A lot of tri-tips come with a big fat cap on there. We're gonna leave some of that on there because everybody likes a little bit of that flavor on there, right, Charlie? Mm -hmm. See, you know why they call it a tri-tip? It's triangular shaped, oh, see that? Yeah, well, and you can go back and you can nick all this little meat fat stuff off if you want, but it's got some flavor. There's no reason to cut all that off, you know? We'll do it just to show what's underneath. All right, see that? It's a nice piece of meat, right? We're yeah. gonna make some wonderful sandwiches with this today. Some red onions, we're gonna cover it in a nice rub. We're gonna eat some grinder's rub or whatever anybody has, but we have grinder's rub here. So, what we do is we put a little oil on this, Charlie. Okay. Oil helps bind all of our rubs together onto the meat, okay? So okay. just a little diddly dot right on top, like that. Can I? Nope, you don't have a glove on. Put right. some on this side, just like that. Oh, there's a little chunk I missed. Let's cut that off. Beautiful flank steak. Look at that. Look at that. All right? Boom. Right across the top. We got this olive oil from our boy Dimitri, who's another one of our mess lords. If you guys run across Dimitri up there at the shanty outside Chicago, great stuff. Lonely tree olive oil. He's got a family farm down in Greece. He's one of those Grecians. One of those good Grecians. All right. So I got a little olive oil on there. Extra virgin. Yeah. <laughs> Super tasty, right? Yep. yep. None of that crap stuff, right? right. So that's going to help this rub bind to the meat. So, black pepper, put it in the bowl. About half of that. Only Santa Maria tri-tip, California. It's where it came from. Let me see. You don't want to overdo it? That's plenty, that's plenty. Now do about half the same amount of salt. No, you need half of this bowl. Watch, watch, watch. Put it in there like that. So, okay, got it? Put it out in front so the camera can see you. Half that salt, Jaxie. Turn it on this side, left hand to the camera. Always show it, there you go. Good, perfect. <laughs> About a, about a one to one ratio on that. Santa Maria, California, where this kind of started. It's normally garlic, black pepper, salt, 
You can add some onion powder. Some people even add cheese, which is just kind of weird to me, but we might just add it. We might just get crazy. I'm all about it. You know, when I cook, it's kind of like being an expressionist. It's like the Jackson Pollock of cooking anyway. You might get beamed in the head by something like Gallagher, but you never know what's going to happen. So what do we got in there so far? Salt, but that's not normal salt. We took it to the next level. It's actually a smoked salt. We smoked with pecan wood. So every time I fire up my smokers here at the house or down at the restaurant, we use a smoked salt. We take a kosher salt, put it in a pan, sift it out every now and then. It turns nice and golden brown and it's mixed with normal kosher salt. It just takes everything, even salads to the whole next level. Okay, we need some onion pep powder in there. Okay. Open that thing up, onion powder. Don't show the label because they're not giving us any money. This? Yeah, that's garlic powder. Go ahead, that needs to go in there too. Everything in there. Let's just shake it like this. Shake, shake, shake. Come on. Boop, 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 boop. Good. Jaxie, mix it. With what? With your finger. Why not? I'll give you a spoon. Here. Mix it all up. Let me see how it looks. Yeah. Stand this side. There you go. There you go. Mix. Need some more black pepper. I can tell already. Go ahead. Totally different than like a Texas steak that you want to do. We're going to also do a reverse sear on this. We're going to put this bad boy, you know what, let's just sear the heck out of it and then put it on the opposite side of the grill, meaning we have a two-zone grill hooked up. We got our PK over here, and we're probably running about 200, 250 right now. I got another can of charcoal on the back, as you can see, blaring away. But to go along with this, we're going to make a little horseradish sauce, and then we're going to make a little basting sauce. So we're going to just kind of stretchify it a little bit. How's it look? Look good? Okay. Nice looking mixture, very even. So with the salt and pepper and garlic and uh, onion powder mixture, we're gonna hold our hands up way high. And when the chefs do that, it's not just for TV purposes, right? It's hard to do in the wind. It's to get an even coverage across all your meat, right? Mm -hmm. So take this up here like this and sprinkle this. Make it dance, just like that. Just make it dance, get a nice coating on there. And if you can do this, give it yourself about an hour, hour and a half, you know, in the refrigerator to sweat. I don't know what you're saying. We're at low battery. Oh, well, well, we better do something about it. So get it covered. I mean, how low? You're going to have to get... 20%. No. Coat it real nice. Thank you. Technology right here. And yet, what we're doing is no sprinkle, don't throw. We want to sprinkle it on there. Like this. Yep. Hit this edge for me right here. You notice I have one hand handling the meat, and one hand is dry. Way up high, guys. And we don't actually rub it. You won't be able to charge it. You're good. We'll, we'll finish. It's good. Up high, guys. So with these thicker cuts of meat, they can handle. Don't over. Yeah, you can get it. Yeah. We pat it in. We don't actually rub it, right? Let's get this edge. You want to get all sides, right? I'm getting right here. Good job. How about this edge here, Chucky? All right. Now let's flip this bad boy over. Here we go. We're flipping her over. All right. Hit it. See how it's nice and raw? We're also going to hit it with a little bit of grinder's rub. Grinder's rub just gives it that little extra kick. It's got some smoked paprika in there. It's got cumin. It's got paprika. You already said paprika. Did I say paprika twice? Good. Good. Light dusting. It also will give it some nice color. You want to take these both up to about 130 at most, 125, and let them rest. Okay, so we're resting. We're going to check our temp over here. Take my glove off. Should I keep it on? I'll take it off right now. Okay, we're going to move this meat off to the side for a second. We're going to make some other food. So that's sitting back there, right? Next, we need to have a cutting board. I need one of those cardboard cutting boards on the kitchen table, please. We need to make up a little basting fluid. We want to make sure that that meat stays nice and fluid. We're going to add some olive oil to it. It'll be here in a second. And we're going to put it in this bowl. So pour some olive oil in there for me, please, young lady. I will. I just keep on going. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah, about a quarter cup. Perfect. Now some red wine vinegar. Thanks, Jax. Put some of that in there. Good. A little more. Good. Perfect. Now, to take it to a whole nother level, we need a little honey, but rather than just regular, if you guys aren't familiar with these, these are disposable cutting boards, they're fantastic. We're going to slide this down underneath here, Chuck, Chuck. There we go. There we go. We're going to use some hot honey. You can't put too much of it. You want to taste it? Put your finger out. You don't like spicy. Jackson, give me your finger. 
It's not that bad. It's it's good. It's sweet and heat. Sweet and heat. Yeah. That's good. Just a little splash. You can use normal honey. It's all good. good. You like that? And then we're also going to add some of the Cosmos rib glaze, huh? which it you want to taste that? It's also got a little heat. It's a little habanero. Just a little bit. All right, mix that bad boy up. Mix, mix, mix. Mix, 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 mix. We want to have some red onions ready to go. Some slices. We're going to put this on a ciabatta bread. I got some nice ciabatta bread from our local bakery. Will be real nice. Thank you, Jax. Okay. <laughs> now, that's going to be a little bit of our basting fluid. You want to stick your finger in there and taste it? That's excellent. What do you think? Too spicy? Perfect. Good. What do you think? Olive oil. And yeah, is that good? Please. Okay. Now, we got to make our horseradish sauce. I need to get a spoonful of that. Two spoonfuls, please. Yes. Sour cream. Uh, Use the spoon. Good. Yes, yep. You can put it in there. Two spoonfuls sour cream into our horseradish sauce. It's like we're being invaded again. Mess Lords want to thank everybody around the globe for doing what they did. Two spoonfuls, you got two spoonfuls in there? You know what? I think we should add some mustard into our, our sauce over here. A little bit of, you have the great Poupon, great. Two little squeezes, I'm using the Jack Daniels, but a dark mustard, a little great Poupon, mix that in. It's almost like a salad dressing. You could use this on a salad. What do you think? Don't stick that back in there. Don't you dare do that. Mm -hmm. Now, you need horseradish. Where's our horseradish? Right here. Give me that spoon. Nope. Jax, come here. Too late. We need this right in there. Here's our horseradish sauce. That's a fresh horseradish that mommy made. Mix it up. Use this spoon right here because it's going to go back in there. Hold on. See how when you mix it up, it uh -huh. doesn't break with the oil and the vinegar? Remember how it was separating oil and water? Same thing. But see? Now it's all coming together like that. That's a good sauce. You could use that as a dressing on your salad. You like salads, don't you? But this is going on flesh, red meat. All right, you're gone. You gonna mix this up? You don't like spicy, but I, you gotta taste it anyway. Come here. Jax, tell me if that's too spicy. Finger. Just a little bit. Too much sour cream? It's all right. Too much sour cream. A little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. A little bit. A little bit more of the... I can mostly taste the sour cream. Yeah. A little bit a little too much. You can thank your sister for that. Hey. It's all right. We we'll make it in a smaller bowl. We'll add a little more horseradish to it. Thank you. Easy peasy lemon squeeze. You know what? A little lemon wouldn't be bad. I'll go get some lemon. No, we don't need it. We don't need it. All right, let's taste it now, Jaxie. It's a lot better. A little more heat. It's all right. It's just to add a little extra flavor to that, right? Boom. How's our fire doing? Just it. It's getting there. Let's add the last little bit of those coals on here. And then we're going to sear this. You're going to have to, uh, I can't see anything in the dark. It's now dark here in Kansas City. We're trying to figure it out. Stand back. These, I just can't see. There we go. Move. All right. So when it comes to charcoal, you want to make sure the charcoal is passed and at white. You don't want to just dump them in when they're still black in there. Black charcoal is going to give you different flavor profiles. And as you can see, I have it set up in a two-zone setup. You want to have the hot on one side so we can do some serious searing. And then we're going to drop it down on the other side to finish it off. Your light okay? Your lighting okay. Well, you'd know if it's dark. All right. 
So we got this bad boy. We're going to bring over the steak, the, the tri-tip and the flank. We're going to lay it down. We're going to cook it for about two minutes on each side. We're going to turn it, rotate it, just to give it some fancy markings. Then we're going to move it to the other side of the grill, and we're going to take it to about a buck 25, buck 30. All right. Where's those tongs I asked for earlier? I got it. Go get the tongs. Okay. So, flank steak. Thank you. Let that bad boy get some heat. That's a big flank steak. We're cooking the flank steak because we've got a bunch of people over. Okay, you're, you're standing in the light. Watch out. Bacon. You can walk this way. I don't know how long it's been since you've had a macaroon. I mean, it feels like the deal when it comes to the steak, these flank steaks all have a grain, just like the tri-tip. You always want to cut against it. You can add a chimichurri sauce to this. You can make a sandwich out of it. You can make a whole meal. You can add potatoes, asparagus, whatever. We're going to make a little ciabatta sandwich tonight, a little finger food. Everybody loves the tri-tip and the flank steak. And here we go. We're going to flip it. It's been through television. It's been two minutes. It is what it is. Yum. It just sits there. So make sure you have a frosty beverage of your choice. And I'm drinking iced tea out of my fancy cup in Kansas City. We've been having a tough time out here, like everyone around the globe, trying to stay safe in COVID. I hope you and your families are safe. Fun fact, by the way, our friend Jeff Vanderland <laughs> is one of our mess lords. And he always keeps one hand clean with a rubber glove like I was doing earlier. I just forgot to mention that. All right. So we got a nice little sear on the both sides there. We'll flip this over. You guys are in my light. Flank steak is a nice piece of meat. It's very versatile. You can use it for fajitas. You can use it just as a, a, a meal. You can put it with eggs. You can put it in tacos. She just dumped raw meat juice everywhere. I got a dog on the set, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about that. And then we're going to let it get some hot heat, and then we're going to flop that tri-tip on here. Doot, 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 doot. Flank steak's a lot thinner than the tri-tip, so we're going to move that over. Right now, going to hit it with my little scraper. Let the grill get nice and hot again. If you left it on in one spot, tri-tips can flip-flop back and forth because they're real thick. You can do that all night long if you want, or you can just set it and forget it. Yes, sir. All right. Tri-tip. Ready? You want to try and move it? It's kind of heavy. Let's get it hot. You want to hear the sear? Can you hear the sear? Let me put my microphone down. Are you ready? Now that's going to have to sit on there for a couple minutes. Hear it? All right. Close that up. Hopefully that gets up to about 600 degrees real quick. All wide open. Close one side down a little bit so the smoke and heat comes up from this side travels across and then comes out the other side. So if you're cooking on a web or any of your home smoking devices, you got your air. Can't have fire without air, right? So you got to have that combination, that mixture. So I got my bottom vents wide open. I mean, it's balls to the wall. Little damper closed here. So it comes up, crosses the meat, cross the other side, and then out the other port. So when we end up putting the meat on the other side. This side is a nice, hot, consistent chamber. You can cook bread on it. You can, you know, Hell, do a croissant <laughs> for my baking friends. Oh. Can you say croissant? Let's hear your French accent. Croissant. No. So it's been about, oh, 
30 to 35 minutes. We've basted the meat a bunch of times in there. The flank stuff steak's about, the flank steak is about ready. Let's pull that off real quick. The PK has been rocking and rolling. This should be right around 140 at most. I was hoping for a little less, but we got crazy over here. Nice sharp cut against the grain on the flank steak. Hey, so we're back. Where did we lose out? I have no clue. So we got our horseradish sauce on our ciabatta bread. We got our red onion on there. We got this wonderful taste in tri-tip. We're gonna lay it on there. We left a couple off for the kids. It's, the bread's been warmed up. You can use any kind of bread you want, whatever you can find on, around the globe. These are little micro sandwiches. You can make a little bit of an odd jus if you want. They're gonna be tough to eat. Uh, these little thick chunks. I could have cut them a little thinner on here, but you know what? Why not? Go for it. The kids just want one or two chunks on there. We're going to manhandle all this stuff anyway. All right, so one for there. Put it there. Put that, fold that baby up. Fold that baby up. These are ciabatta grilled horseradish tri-tip sandwiches made in Kansas City right there. Get a good close-up of that by the mess lords for you around the globe. Let's get Dan Wayne in here to sample one of these bad boys. Get a good bite on that, Dan. There you go. Ah, thank you. Mara, come on in. Get a bite on this. You know how to eat. Got it. Thank you. There you go. I got to get a bite on that, too. The hidden spot, you need some more sauce? A little more horsey? That's, we're going to call that the comeback sauce. I think could have sliced those red onions a little thinner. No way. No? So, Perfect. So the tri-tip is right on. It's not over, a little pink on that end because it was the thickest part. We could have left it a little on. It's we'll run out of daylight, but. Juicy. Mm -hmm. I'd eat it again. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Boys and girls, men and women, thank you for serving around the globe. Best lords love you. Peace, be safe.